walked along the gypsy road, singing songs of old. We set our things out on the ground. We built a campfire to gather round, telling tales of the sea. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Max from Maxim Outdoors and as the thumbnail suggests today we're going to be trying to put together the ingredients to make a game pie. Now game, if you don't know, is sort of meats that derive from the wild. Today we'll be mainly looking for rabbit, squirrel, pigeon, duck and anything else really that we might get the opportunity to take towards making this pie. Now when I say opportunity maybe we should just call this an opportunist pie because that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today is just taking any opportunity really to take uh, an edible meat from the wild. So the tool, if you haven't seen my previous, my previous videos, the tool I'll be using is this. It's a BSA Scorpion air rifle, a .22 calibre and the pressure that this is putting out is sub 12 foot pounds which means that it's legal to own in the UK without a license. Just bought a new scope so we'll have a look at this. For anybody that doesn't shoot this is a, well if you shoot or not this is a Hawk. It is a Sidewinder which means that it's got a parallax, it's parallax adjustable. Now if you don't shoot go and, uh, go and look that up that on Google if you're interested in what parallax is and if you do shoot you'll already know but this is an 8x32 x 56 it's got mill dot half reticle um, brilliant 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 scope and then as you can see on the back there's an adapter and what I just took off is a pad 007 this is a day and night vision scope but it also records in 10h 1080h HP 1080p isn't it? HD. So that's what I'll be using to show you a bit more of what I'm looking at through the scope. I don't I don't think by any chance I'm going to be um, lucky enough to get all the shots today so the video will essentially be a montage of different hunting scenarios over the next couple of days, week or however long it takes I'm going to be individually preparing those animals, cooking them, freezing them, and then taking them out, hopefully, make a game pie. So, without further ado, let's just get on to it. start being a bit more quiet now we're going to be stalking up the edge of this fence taking a stop every sort of five to six steps having a good look around having a look up in the trees and the floor just really what I would say is we're looking out for obvious movement amongst what would normally be a still landscape and Again, in the trees, you can see behind me here this ash tree is it's blowing in the wind, but if you've ever done any shooting within woodland, you'll realise that the, the branches will move, but I'll say unnormally, to what they would in the wind, so you'd be really looking out for those. So the farmers had a real big problem with the squirrels lately and they've, they've been really busy in the mornings collecting the nuts from, from the trees and burying them where he's been cutting his, uh, his lawns so he's not really happy with them digging up the, the ground. I've spent the last couple of days 
well, for the last two weeks really, just trying to thin them out in their numbers, but they've been quite elusive of late. I'm going to be a bit quiet. I've just spotted a rabbit. He's at exactly 30 yards, which I've just checked with my rangefinder. So I'm going to make my way to this fence by here. Try and get a steady shot off of that post by the gate and see if I can take it with a clean headshot. The gypsy road is hard to find But for everyone is there The gypsy road is hard to find Search deep within your mind Search deep within your mind Search deep within your mind Brilliant clean head shot yet again. He's down, it's not kicking. Really happy with that. See if you can see that through the scope cam. Oh, I better go get him. Him. Right guys, I think I'm going to sit here a minute and just talk to you about a few things. Super lucky with that first shot. Um, it's not often you just start a stalk like that, I was literally 10 minutes into it and just spotted that rabbit sitting in his lie on the on the fairy bank there, but took my time, got on with steady platform where I could rest my gun and make sure that I had a steady shot off and just gently squeeze that trigger and you'll you'll notice that I took my safety off. I do always walk around with my safety on. I think it's quite it's quite a necessity. You never know just coming over a fence and just pull the trigger I see that and shots go off. Accidents happen. Second shot I see and again high up in the trees took my time seemed to notice me at first but just as I got around the edge of the tree I don't know if there was a glare or something off the scope I don't know but he could just just see me but as you saw the pellet did drop even though I range finder that I don't know if the angle in the tree maybe it was further than I thought it must have been but clean kill I think what happened was the pellet entered on its back and skimmed up and hit it in the back of the neck and he dropped like a rock as soon as I got over there cleaned out dead. I'm not going to show you the photo because it's graphic but the back of the neck was just missing. So 
Here's our pigeon from earlier. As you can see, pellet blew the back of his neck out. That's probably why it died on impact. All we're going to do is we're just going to um, breast this bird out. So by standing on the wings, we're going to pull the feathers out from the breast, which will reveal the skin underneath. As you can see there. And you can start to see the shape of the, the meat on the breast. There's not a lot on the pigeon, but these are really the, the things you want to be eating. But you want to take your time, try not to rip the skin. So there we have the breast of the wood pigeon. And then um, I'll cock that up now and get it in the freezer. Right then guys, we have come back into the kitchen. So basically, with the wood pigeon, I breast it out in the field, and then we just brought it home and pan fried it. We just cut the breast meat off, the breast bone, and then pan fried the, the breast meat. You can cut this just like a steak, but I like to, I like to do it quite well done. I don't, it's just a personal uh, thing of mine, I, that's how I like it. So anyway, that's gone into the freezer now after cooling, but the rabbit's a bit more of a prep work. We've skinned and we've got it in the field, and then we've had to leave the rabbit in um, salted water overnight. So this has been in there almost, well, actually it's been in almost 24 hours, and it really does help with the cooking of the rabbit. So what we're gonna do now is drain the water off in the sink, I can go in there. We've boiled the kettle. And it's quite simple in terms of cooking, just chuck it in there. And then, slow, you want to slowly poach this now, for a good few hours. And then, what you should get is absolutely meat falling off the bone. So. I like to try and cover the rabbit, but it's not completely essential if you've got a lid on the saucepan. So, like I said, slowly poach this now. You'll see all the rabbit meat go sort of a white, very, very light dark brown. But you, you'll know when it's done. Um, with a few hours, it'll be cut lovely and that it won't be tough at all. So after we've cut that then, we'll shred the meat off the bone and put that again, once it's cool, into the food. So that's been um, poaching away for around two and a half hours. You can see the meat is sort of pulled back at the legs, but as you can see here, it literally just falls off. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> literally just falls apart so we'll get that shredded up later we'll get it in the freezer and you'll see that again when we put it out to make our game pie see some of these chestnuts that we picked the other day um, a lot of people prick these and put them in the oven but they're liable to explode or you can cook them by a campfire but what I like to do is just cut a a simple cross in it and then boil them and it'll stop them exploding and it'll be a lot easier to peel from the shells. So guys we're back in the kitchen uh, we've got a saucepan on and we're going to fill that with boiling water. We've got a medley of vegetables here which we've grown in the garden 
and then put it in the freezer. And we're going to boil the potatoes first. We're not going overboard, obviously, we only just really want to fill up the pie ingredients. So once these potatoes have boiled for a bit, we'll then obviously put in the carrots and the runner beans and French climbing beans as well. We've got some of the chestnuts as well there on the left hand side that we picked earlier. We've got some frozen peas because I don't grow any peas anymore because it's just it's just too easy to buy a bag of peas for a pound rather than a struggle with growing them yourself. Whereas potatoes and carrots are you get much, potatoes, you get much more bang for your bucks. So we're gonna get that on the boil. So we've got rabbit and we've got pigeon and because I struggled to find the permission that I could shoot a duck on at this time of year, what I have got was given to me by a local farmer and I'll try to find that for you now. In the freezer quite a while. They are here somewhere. These are venison and wild boar sausages that were actually shot locally and butchered by a local butcher so you're not really getting more game meat and as far as I'm concerned better than that. So I'm going to heat some oil up in the pan. And um, First thing we'll be doing is frying off these sausages until they're cooked. Then we're going to be adding this is frozen wood pigeon breast. So we'll be heating that up in the pan as well. And the frozen rabbit that we shot and cut the other day. And then you guessed it, I made my own puff pastry. Um, Oh, I bought it from Tesco, but it is what it is. So we're going to boil the potatoes, boil the veg, drain them off. We're going to be frying up the venison and wild boar sausages, adding the meats, get it all together, make a dry mixture, line the pan, and uh, hopefully cook with a good pie. So we'll see you on the journey. Now those potatoes have been boiling for quite some time. Here are the carrots, the runner beans, and the peas. We're not fussed about um, them being individual because they're all going in the same time. Oh, we've got a, uh -oh, we got a rip in the bottom of these peas here. Feed them in, feed them in. When it escaped the pan there, but we're not worried about that. Oh. Um, I can't have enough too many peas in it. Add some boiling water to top up the pan on those. Obviously we're going to drain them off anyway, so don't worry there. Get this out of the way. A big clean up later. So now this has been these sausages all smashed up and been cooking away for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm just gonna make sure that that is great. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. Into the pan, one chopped red onion, one red pepper. We're going to cut these up before we already, uh, before we add our already cut rabbit and wood pigeon. We want to sort of sweat this pepper out so it doesn't add too much moisture. I hope we've got enough puff pastry to um, cover the ingredients of the pint. Because there seems to be quite a lot here.
We're going to add two cloves of freshly chopped garlic to your garden. Give that a good stir in. Smells come off this are unbelievable. and then that will slowly sweat down or we'll mix it in together it's already cut so don't worry about anything like that and obviously it's going to get cut again in the pie so it's getting triple cooked here um, I don't think it's going to render it dry but essentially we'll only find out in the final product so let's go see that So you can see the, uh, what I can only be described as a clod of rabbit has broken up quite nicely. We've just got a final bit to do, but that's all them breaking up nicely. What we're going to do then is we're going to add some salt and pepper and a few spices in the, the forms of parsley, a bit of basil, a bit of oregano. And then we're going to drain off the vegetables and then add the vegetables to the pan cook it all together for 5 to 10 minutes, not overcooking it and then we're going to line the, the pie dish and put it all in and chuck it in the oven and try not to do that. Right, as you can see the clod of rabbit is uh, defrosted nicely and is getting fried up with all the other stuff. So what we're going to do now is um, going to drain off the vegetables and then add the vegetables to the pan give me two seconds and then we're going to add some herbs and spices in the form of um, salt and pepper a bit of basil, a bit of oregano um, all dry, a bit of parsley uh, oh, we're out of uh, oregano. We're going to put a bit of Italian spices in there for, for the sheer fun of it. A bit of parsley. And a basil. That's rubbish. We'll trap black pepper. And a good bit of salt. Why not? For the Worcester sauce. Let's add a nice bit of complexity to the pan. This is basically just two of meat in there. <laughs> We're not complaining. So we've lined the pan with um, the pastry, and now this job is to try and get as much of this pie filling in there as we can. But I think it's a bit of a futile <laughs> effort because, well, I don't know. Maybe we will win, who knows? So if we push it down a bit, we'll, uh, I can't, well, I don't know, mind. I don't know, I think we're winning actually. I think it might be the exact amount. Probably thinking a spoon would have been a better job for this, but you're wrong. Plastic spatula is absolutely ample. Yum. Mmm. So tasty. So, what we're going to do now is uh, try and 
trim off the edges and I think isn't the tradition to um, put beaten egg round the outside if so that's what we're going to do we'll beat an egg and we will trim the edges off and rub beaten egg round the outside where we're going to lap the crust of the pile there Oh, things got messy here, didn't they? So, right, anyway. Oh, got that lid stuck. On with the lid. Let's get those uh, edges all sealed up nicely. Don't forget guys, brush your pie, same with the pasty. Well, you're <laughs> a bit neat, aren't you? <laughs> We're fingering it on now. <laughs> and uh, a few drainage holes. So we preheat the oven to 180 and we're going to put this in roughly into this cup. If any of you at home are thinking, is this the first time this lad's made a pie? Yes. No, I'm only joking. It's not the first time. Clean up time. Just giving everything a scrub down. Pack that oil off earlier when the ice off the sausages met the hot oil. It was a school by error, but never mind. These things happen. Make sure everything is nice and clean. Run out of that kitchen paper, so I tell my wife to put that on the shopping list. Joke's on her, she's actually sat behind me. Put that on the shopping list, please. Well. Mrs. Hobbs, Mrs. Max. Well, 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 guys, it's been 35 to 40 minutes in the oven now, and uh, we're ready to see the finished article. So, without further ado, there she is in all her pride and glory. Check her out. I was going to touch that then. But no chance. There's no way I can put the smell off that. It's phenomenal. And uh, I think you'll agree she looks pretty darn good, does she not? Let's have a close up. So the egg base then has really gone off quite well. <laughs> Can't wait to get stuck in. Well, we're going in guys, and I'm just got a serrated knife here. So I'm going to cut off a section of this pie. I'm not going to have much because I, uh, I'm going to have a proper portion later on. I think the butter in the pan has gone well as well. Um, I think we'll need a fork now um, to get that section out. Maybe I should put this onto a separate dish, but we can do that again later. Oh no, it's uh, absolutely a bit of filling came out in the dish. That's not a problem. We can fork that out. a ridiculous amount of filling in this. 
here we have it. Tightest red. I've actually just ruined my perfectly clean, I wouldn't say perfectly clean, but very clean uh, hob. I think you'll agree guys, it looks amazing. So we're gonna go with the table. So there we have it guys, the first article yet again. Uh, bon appetit, I don't think it would be correct of me to enjoy this without one of my personal favourite beers. We don't like a empty place mat there and an empty beer mat or drinks mat. So from me, Max at Max Smoke Doors to everyone at home. Cheers. Oh, it's good. Mm. Nice big dollop of barbecue sauce. Some lovely bit of wood pitch in there. Just tastes superly like beef or steak. I mean, I bet you a knife, a knife. Completely honest with you, it just tastes sort of like any uh, good pie you get, but without a shortage of any meat. I think you agree as well that the short crust pastry is come up perfectly. So if anybody has got any suggestions on uh, a new video or something they'd like to see, drop it in the comments. I'm always open to suggestions and I really appreciate the uh, comment too. Everybody that's watched my previous videos and supported the channel to this point, I'm really appreciative of that as well. And thank you to everybody at home. I'm glad that A, you're enjoying the comment and uh, the content and leaving comments as well. I'm super appreciated to all the subscribers and everyone who's like-minded and has enjoyed the feel to fork sort of content. So yeah, thanks for everyone at home. Anybody who is into cooking as well and has got any tips on that sort of uh, area, I'd be more than grateful to hear from you lot too. But I'm going to tuck into this and get finished and then I'm going to go out for a pint I think in the local pub. So from Maximo Outdoors, cheers guys, I'm going to call that a wrap, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Mm. Old Peculiar, the legend, 5.6%. She's a good one.